our pastor, Bishop Milton Hawkins, In him was life, and the life was the light of men. In the world ye shall have tribulation. Be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. For he looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house, there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go and prepare a place for you, that where I am, there, ye may be also and we know that we have passed from death unto life we shall all be changed this is life eternal that they may know thee the only true God and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. Whosoever liveth and believeth on me shall never die. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us now into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever Amen Inward man perish. Man, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. Preach deliverance to the captives. Restoring sight to those who are blind. To preach the acceptable year of our Lord. This day is the scripture fulfilled in your ears.
shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies, Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Enoch walked with God. He was not, for God took him. from heaven saying unto me right blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth yea saith the spirit that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them Thank you. 
my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked and my enemies and my foes came upon me to eat of my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though a host encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war rise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, and that will I seek after. I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion, in the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set my feet upon a rock and establish my glory. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house, there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go and prepare a place for you where I am, there ye may be also. Jesus answered and said unto him, What I do now, thou knowest not, but thou shalt know hereafter.
that our God is a faithful God and that our God is a good God and that our God is worthy to be praised let's give him the greatest praise that you can give him let's give God the greatest Shabbat that you can give him let's give God the greatest praise let everything that have breath praise ye the Lord come on and give God praise now thank him for the life of evangelist Louise Dowdy Patterson. Come on, let's praise God for this elegant lady, this woman of God, this beautiful woman of the Lord. Let's thank God for evangelist Louise Dowdy Patterson. Hallelujah. 
Those of us who know Evangelist Patterson, we know she liked to have church. And when she really got happy, she put her hand on her hip. So we're going to praise God on tonight. We're going to give God glory. And we're going to magnify him for the life that God gave us through this great woman of God. At this time, my beautiful wife of more than 33 years and the First Lady of Temple of Deliverance, Church of God in Christ, she's going to come and lead us further in worship. Say amen for her. Praise God. Praise God. Praise our great and our mighty God. Please be seated. Hallelujah. 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 It's a celebration. Our pastor, Bishop Milton R. Hawkins, just gave the order of the service to celebrate the life. It's very difficult to talk about such a phenomenal woman. It's very difficult to describe and give honor where such honor is due. To some, she was mom. To others, she was aunt. To others, she was sis. To others, she was a friend. But here at Temple of Deliverance, she was our leader. She led and established the women's department here. She led by example, she taught, she spoke, she gave until it hurt. And there is nothing that we can do to repay her. There is nothing that we can say that properly describes how much we owe. But we have came tonight to honor, to remember, and to celebrate. I am going to ask every woman in this church tonight, and many of you have your yellow flowers and corsages on, because yellow roses were her favorite. And thank you for wearing them tonight. I'm going to ask every woman in the house to stand again. And let us celebrate the great evangelist, Louise Patterson. Louise Dowdy Patterson. Let the applause ring. Let the applause ring. Let the applause ring. Thank you. As the celebration continues, we're going to have a hymn of comfort by evangelist Modira Henry. And we, the congregation, are going to sing along with her. And then Dr. Evangelist Dimitri Springfield Banks will bring a prayer of comfort. And she will be followed by the Old Testament scripture by a dear friend and sister of Evangelist Patterson, Sister Joyce Black. And the Temple of Deliverance praise team 
will give a choral response. And then Elder Lamart Trent will read for our hearing the New Testament scripture. Please come in that order and I shall return. God bless you. with my soul when peace when peace like a river attended my way when the sorrows like sea billows roll
and the legacy of Evangelist Louise God, we thank you for her, for her wisdom, her teachings, and everything that we were blessed to learn from her. Look on us now, oh God. You are the source of our strength. You are the strength of our life. Look on us now, oh God, and strengthen us like no other can. We look to the hills tonight from which come our help, oh God. Knowing our help come from you, oh God. We thank you for this celebration of life, oh God. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah. Strengthen us now, oh God. Hallelujah. Of Abashando. Strengthen us, God. In the name of Jesus. Like only you can strength. Bless us, oh God. Like only you can bless. Comfort us, God. Like only you can comfort. In the name of Jesus. Look on the family right now touch right now God touch right now God touch right now God touch touch right now God mother Kelly God brother Ronnie oh God the entire family God our church family friends everywhere touch us right now God touch us right now God touch us right now God and give us strength oh God in the name of Jesus we are looking to you to the hills and come which coming our help God we thank you for our help tonight oh we thank you for our help tonight higher we thank you for our help tonight we thank you for our help tonight we thank you for our help Thank you for our help, God. In Jesus' matchless name, amen and thank God. Scripture reading of God's Word from the Old Testament. Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 6, two of Evangelist Patterson's, our beloved Sister Lou's favorite verses. And I have also selected from the book of Isaiah, verse 3 of chapter 61. Proverbs 3 and verses 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. Isaiah verse 3 of chapter 61, Amplified Bible. To grant consolation to those who mourn in Zion. To give them an ornament of beauty instead of ashes the oil of joy instead of mourning, the garment of praise instead of heaviness, that they may be called oaks of righteousness, the plantings of the Lord, that he may be glorified. God's word for God's people. Finally, brethren, whatsoever are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report 
If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do and the God of peace shall be with you Philippians 4 8 and 9 Thank you, Jesus. I believe that there is just about two to three hundred people in the audience that feel like their name should have been on the program. I know that there is about 500 that could give a brief testimony how Evangelist Patterson ministered to them. I wish I had the time because I could tell a few stories. How she ministered to me even in the midnight hour. How she encouraged me when I was down. How she pushed me when I thought I couldn't do it. How she lifted me up and prevented me from falling. I know one time she told me that my mother was going to live and not die, and I looked in the eye and I said, how can you guarantee that? And she said, I know what I know. And my mother lived at least another five years. But unfortunately, we are not able to include everyone on the program. But we have just a few that are going to not tell it all, but just give a little section of what Evangelist Patterson did at the local church. As we hear from Deacon Irvin Thomas, and then we're going to hear about some of her community work because she was just not known at Temple Web Deliverance, and she was not just known in the churches of God in Christ. But she was known throughout out the city and the world. So, as I stated, Deacon Irvin Thompson is going to talk as the chairman of the Deacon Board here at Temple of Deliverance. And we're going to hear from the community voices in the crowd, Apostle Bill Atkins from the Greater Armani Church, and then Pastor Keith Norman from First Baptist Church Broad. And we're going to have a representative from the clergy, one of the jurisdictional bishops of the Church of God in Christ here in Tennessee, Bishop William S. Wright. Please come in that order and I will come back, but I failed to say God bless you to my jurisdictional bishop, Bishop Jerry L. Maynard. Amen. Amen. And I failed to recognize one of her dear sons. I know that you know General Board Member uh, Bishop Hines. And we are so blessed to have our supervisor and pastoral assistant here at Temple of Deliverance. You will hear from our very own jurisdictional supervisor, Mother Diola Wells Johnson. And we also have our first lady of our jurisdiction, Dr. Mary T. Maynard. Do not have time to name all of those, but as the deacons and pastors and bishops are coming, please pray for them. God bless you.
going to try. All right, I'm ready. Everybody here know how I am. I just have to be me. First, I would like to give honor to my jurisdictional bishop, Bishop Jerry O. Maynard. His lovely wife, Dr. Mary T. My pastor, Bishop Milton R. Hawkins, and my first lady, Catherine Crawford Hawkins. I would give honor to everyone else, but tomorrow is the national. Tonight is our night. I, I thought about what, what can you say about someone like Louise Dowdy Patterson? But let me start by saying I met her in September of 1969. And when I met Sister Lou, it was like something I had never, ever seen before. You know, I'm a country boy. You know, I'd never seen at that time ladies fixed up. You know, the Church of God in Christ had a lot of rules. <laughs> yeah, L long dresses and rollers and, you know, you couldn't, you really couldn't look like Sister Lou. <laughs> and I was young, but I remember sitting by a lot of guys around my age. And when she walked down the aisle, it looked like every head in the audience turned. And all I could hear was, who is that? Who is that? Who is that? And then I saw this long, tall guy walk behind her. And he kind of had his ears sticking out and had his mouth poked over. <laughs> and they said, she belonged to him. <laughs> but I, I said that because everyone that knew Sister Lou knew that she was a lady of excellence. Not only was she a lady of excellence, but that's what she taught, excellence. She would tell the young women, don't come out of the house with all those rollers on your head. You got to look like you're going somewhere. Even though you're not going anywhere, but you got to look like it. And uh, she was very innovative. I remember when, again, the Church of God in Christ, you know, they had a lot of rules. They, they didn't believe in no cotton carnivals. They didn't believe in no carnivals. So we couldn't go there, so Sister Lou brought it to the church. But she was dealing with a lot of young people. You know, if you don't have anything for these young folk to do, they're going somewhere. And I was extremely blessed to be under the leadership of Bishop Gibbard Earl Patterson. Sister Louise Dowdy Patterson. I always say that they were ahead of their time. They just came into a poor neighborhood, revolutionized it, got a bunch of kids and kept us out of trouble because every Friday we had to meet at Dixie Queen. It wasn't to eat hamburgers but it was the witness and he taught us and she taught us the right things to do how to live how to be blessed and how to help others and then I thought about this and I know I only got three minutes and probably used up two <laughs> but I, I, I thought about Sister Patterson and then I thought about the scripture that says life is like a vapor. Right. And then it, you, you'll see a vapor and it just goes up and it goes away. Then I thought about my own mom, 
So you know, I walk in the kitchen and pots be cooking and you'll see the steam coming out of the pipes, going up, going up, and then disappear. But that aroma is still in the kitchen. If I was a preacher, my topic would be, it's in the pot. And if you ask me why it's in the pot, you think about it. You see the aroma, you see the steam going up, but the main ingredients are still in the pot. So in my third conclusion, <laughs> Sister Lou is that sweet smelling aroma that's gone up. But in the pot, she left something for you, Kay. Because of your dedication, your friendship, and your love, you can always pull the top up and look in the pot, it's there. Sister Francis and Brother Runny, in the pot, you can see you growing up in foot homes. You can see all the good times, all the birthdays, all the special dinners that you shared with her. It's in the pot. Remember when you get sad, when you don't know where to go, just look in the pot. God bless you. Bishop Maynard, give it an honor to you. Good to see you again, in spite of. To my dear friend, Bishop Hawkins, this year has been a difficult year for me. I've had several surgeries this year. And Mother Louise is a taker for me. She would call me and check on me. And I was blessed to have another one, Mother Frances. I had these two beautiful bookends that prayed me through. These wonderful, glorious women of God. I'm so glad they love me because I certainly love them. Mother Louise was something special. She was more than just wonderful for the Church of God in Christ. But she crossed ecumenical lines years ago. She spoke at Baptist churches. Methodist, whatever. She prayed for other pastors. She was such that she cared so much about God's people. One of the last times she spoke was at Greater Amani on September the 19th at the funeral of Ronald Roth. And she talked about living in God's will. We learn to live in God's will and we'll learn to die in God's will. We'll learn to trust the Lord regardless of circumstance and situation. We'll learn to fight through those obstacles and barriers that fall before us. We'll learn to fight even when we don't feel like fighting. We'll learn to stand when we feel like sitting. These are some of her words that she shared on the 19th of September. I said on an interview with one of the TV stations that if you want a template for how to be a bishop's wife, just model yourself after Louise Patterson. I have known her and Bishop Gilbert since the days of the old church over here. 
Bishop Gilbert was a fishing buddy of mine. I thank God for the time that he gave us with her. I'm happy, my wife and I both, for such a wonderful, lovely lady that graced us with her class, her dignity. A woman's woman, a leader. I thank God for her. In my many journeys to, to Africa, one of the lessons I learned from the Ashanti was they have this fable that every now and then God will allow a star to come out of heaven and live here on the earth with us. And that star would be a beacon of light to us. And whatever that person would go, he or she would light up everything around her. That was Louise Patterson. A star, a beacon of light that shined. It wasn't the glitter and the bling on her outfits. It was her soul that shined so brightly. And what a wonderful, what a wonderful life she lived. And what a great contribution she gave to the kingdom of God. I'm so thankful to have known her. I'm so thankful to have loved her. And I'm so thankful that she loved me. Love you, Francis. God bless you. And all of those who love the Lord said amen. amen. Come on, put those hands together and bless God in this house on tonight. Oh, we can do so much better than that. Why don't we just give the Lord a great hand of praise? Most certainly, most certainly we honor our bishop on tonight, Bishop Hawkins and Bishop Maynard. Thank God for you being here on tonight. This is my second time seeing you this week. Uh, we ran into each other at the gas station in some small town across Tennessee. I knew where he was headed. He knew where I was headed. And we had an opportunity to exchange courtesies, most certainly to all of the uh, presiding elders who are here on the general board, those who are of Memphis, we give you honor on tonight, and certainly to all of the clergy men and women who are here. Uh, I recognize something that I want to make clear is that I understand my assignment on tonight. It's important that you understand your assignment whenever you go anywhere. My assignment tonight is to be one of the appetizers that precedes the main course. It's to simply get up and to serve what has to be served. It should be hot, it should be good, it should be a small portion, and it should move out of the way. That's what appetizers do. Appetizers come out quick, they don't stay long, they raise the level of expectation of what is to come. However, if the appetizer is served properly, it will leave you wanting for more. I'm simply an appetizer and I understand my assignment. As a very young preacher in the city of Memphis, when traveling the length and the breadth of the United States, even the world and foreign lands, I would always discover one thing when people found out that I was from Memphis, Tennessee. They would ask me some questions. They would go something like this. Do you know Reverend Frank E. Ray? Uh, they would always ask me that. And then they would go on to say, do you know Bishop G.E. Patterson? And I figured out something. If you could say yes to both of those questions, you could get a free meal and a whole lot of courtesies because to have known both of them means you know somebody. Over the years, the questions would change. They would ask, do you know this person? What about the Grizzlies? But they would inevitably always say, do you know Bishop G.E. Patterson? 
And then even after the passing of Bishop Patterson, they would ask the question, do you know of the church of God in Christ? Do you know where Bishop Patterson served? And they would go on to say this in Patterson, New Jersey and other parts of the country where I would preach. They would say, we watch him every Sunday morning before we go to church. I'm headed somewhere. And they would say that, and I would notice that no matter how the questions would change over my lifetime of travels, they would always come back to, in some way, Bishop G.E. Patterson, and we watch him every Sunday before we go to church. I'm talking about church folk now. And so when I would have these encounters, it caused me to realize what a legend we had in Bishop G.E. Patterson. I realize that, I realize that, and we're not here tonight to just talk simply of Bishop G. Patterson, but whenever you speak of a legend, you are ultimately talking about a legacy that is left. And whenever there is a legend, the legacy is going to fall into the hands of someone who lives beyond the legend. Somebody ought to catch me right here. Because you don't get the full essence of the legacy until you know that the person who's handling the story of the legend loves them and honors. She understood her assignment so well in life that when she was handed the legend, the legend's legacy, she handled it with love and dignity, and the story remained throughout a lifetime. But you have to understand your assignment. You see, there are those who, when they receive the legacy of a legend, they want to elevate themselves above that particular legend. But I need to tell you this, when you really understand what you have, and you know who put it in your hands, you already know that he has a part for you in the life of the legacy. She never elevated herself above that which she inherited. She always lifted him up Sunday after Sunday, even on my way to church. I would be late trying to hear what she had to say about what the God of her, the God of her husband would say through him. And I love that about it because she was one who would always be consistent and you could always know exactly where she was. I'm moving out of your way. Uh, Brother Deacon, you were given three minutes. We were given three minutes. And if I had to put a topic to my assignment, since I am a preacher, I would say she understood her assignment. I wish I had somebody here who could just shout it back and say she understood her assignment. But you see, as I go to my seat, a legend is created by what you have done who you become, and what you are. But the legacy is perpetuated when you leave it in the hands of someone who will value it, love it, and treasure it even after you're gone. In order to be a legacy, and in order to have a legacy, it must fall into the right hands. But God is so good that he does not leave it just legend and legacy, he makes it legendary. See, it has become legendary at this moment that two people built such a great ministry, left it right here for us to always celebrate the goodness of our God and to be able to speak well of him. I wish I had about three or four witnesses in here on tonight who just understand how good God is and what the Lord has already done and how he's making a way. The Bible says in Proverbs 31, 31, and I go to my seat, honor her for all that her hands have done and let her work praise her at the city gate. I think we're standing in the cusp of a place that if you were going downtown, you'd have to come this way on a street called G.E. Patterson Boulevard. I think if you were going uptown, you'd have to come by this way and head on to the east side. If you wanted to go down the expressway, it looks like we're at the gate tonight. And if we are at the gate, we ought to just give her some praise for the things that she has done. I wish I had about five or ten more witnesses in here who don't mind saying it's okay to tell God. God, thank you that he left a living legend with a legacy that has become legendary right here in our city, in the place where we, we reside. Give the Lord a great hand of praise. I go to my seat and I tell you this. When I learned that she was at the hospital where I serve, and I know that there are others here who serve, I called and I told Kay I wanted to talk to her. I said, okay, I need to make sure she has everything she needs. Well, they're taking good care of her. I said, if she wants a hospital gown with sequins and roses, 
call me. I'll make sure it's delivered. But she didn't need a hospital gown with sequins and roses. Does anybody know she's got a robe that's been washed in the blood of the crucified lamb? I ought to have somebody who can just shout glory in this house on tonight and give God praise for the things he has done. Say amen. amen. To our esteemed clergy, host pageant board members, and our just not too distant past vice chairman of the General Assembly and jurisdictional prelate, and to all of God's people, Reverend Dr. Norman, my good close friend, has spoken. Let the church speak. Following preachers and even more difficult following bishops. And earlier we have so many bishops and general board members I failed because I didn't even recognize under the map Bishop Hankerson. Praise God, general board member. But as Pastor Norman was talking about her robe, you know, Evangelist Patterson did love nice things. I had to find a particular pair of earrings to wear this evening because I wanted to one, wear the ones that she always complimented me on. And I was to give them to her because people know when you compliment me on things, I have this tendency. But while he was talking about robes, I was thinking about crowns. And I was thinking about crowns because when we get to glory and our lifetime crowns are being prepared with beautiful jewels. And as we sit here, we can see her and all of the beauty and Sister Kay and, and Rhonda and Marla and Mia and Ashley and Mother Kelly and Brother Ronnie has done a phenomenal job. But oh my God, she has a crown being prepared for her. And as we think about that crown, we're going to go on a little bit further and receive a the Ministry of Music from our brother Andre Hayes. And after her, after he has completed, we will hear more expressions from people who called her friend. Lady Gwendolyn Jackson, evangelist, first lady of Holy Temple Church of God in Christ. And following her will be district missionary Karen Jean Phillips of Tennessee Southwest Jurisdiction. And then we will hear from Mother Desi Lee, jurisdictional supervisor, headquarters jurisdiction. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord again. I do give honor to Bishop Maynard and to my very own Bishop, Bishop Hawkins, and to all of the fraternity. Brother Kelly and to Ron, Michael, Rhonda, Neil, Marla. Earth hath no sorrow that my God's heaven cannot heal. I truly loved Sister Lou, and I'm gonna greatly, greatly miss her as our Temple of Deliverance family will, amen. Amen. 
She was a jewel, a gem to this ministry and to my life. And I know London, England, I know who the queen mother was there, but here in Memphis, Tennessee, that was our queen mother, Mother Louise Dowdy Patterson. And Kay, I'm going to sing the song that you, um, actually the last song that I sang for her, a song that she recorded. It was a, it's been a testimony for years. Just another day that the Lord, oh, has kept me. Just another day that the Lord has kept me. He has kept me from all evil with a mind Jesus, and it's just another day. She was said, Just one more day that the Lord oh, has kept me. I shall never let go his hand. I shall never let go his hand, for he has done so much for me. A song to when I see Jesus. Hey, 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 amen. When I see Jesus, hey, hey, amen. Because you see all my troubles. My troubles, all my heartaches, all my disappointments, they're gonna all be over, over, over. Because when I see Jesus, because when I see Jesus, hey, hey, hey. Amen. When I see Jesus, hey, amen. When I see the one who died for me, when I see the man who set me free, hey, hey, amen. 
But you see all my troubles All oh, my troubles All oh, my heartaches All my disappointments All of my sorrows They will all be over 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 Because when I see Jesus Because when I see Jesus Because when I see Jesus bless each of you on tonight. May the Lord bless each of you. We praise and we honor our Most High God on tonight. The ecclesiastical leadership God bless each one of you to this family, Mother Kelly, our brother Ronnie, my sister-in-law Kay, to all of the family, these nieces and nephews and cousins and all, and all of the extended family. I've pondered for some days now. How do I even begin to capsulize 56 years? Deacon Thomas mentioned in 1969, I can go back just a little bit further. It was in 1964 when I went to Holy Temple Church of God in Christ, 1254 Wilson Street. I was 12 years old. The other G.E. Patterson was our pastor. You can't talk about Elder Patterson, later Bishop Patterson, without bringing up Miss Lou. They complimented each other well. Growing up there, Bishop wasn't married. He spent a lot of time with the young people. He always said that you cannot make adults out of children. He instilled with us godly behavior. In addition to that, he spent time with us. It was in 1966, this tall, attractive, curly-haired young lady started visiting our church. Uh-huh, you know who it was? And as young people, you know, we get to looking around. And this lady kept on coming, and kept on coming, and kept on coming. Then we heard in 1967, it was going to be a wedding. And I don't think a lot of the young people, we didn't have anything against her. We just didn't want her to take our pastor. <laughs> we just thought that he would have to spend time with her that he could have been spending with us. But there was a wedding. My now husband was a groomsman in that wedding. We didn't lose our pastor 
We gained a pastor's wife, a first lady. She instilled a lot of qualities in us. Certain things young ladies just don't do. An avid Sunday school teacher, a scholar. She joined in well, and she stepped right in. And I told her one day after I got to really know her, I said, Miss Lou, you know what? You passed my test. <laughs> I said, now because, you know how young people do, we had to look you over. We don't want our pastor marrying anybody. I said, you passed our test. Somewhere down the line, we became friends. I served as her assistant in the women's department in the Bountiful Blessings Ministry for many years. We had a great relationship. We did a lot of things. I found myself on many occasions talking to her. And now if you talk to her at any time, she had a way of trying to be authoritative. <laughs> See, I could tell how our conversation was going to go when I answered the phone if she called me. She said, Gwenny. She said, I got something to tell you. She said, don't you say nothing. You just listen. <laughs> you, you, all, you, all, you, you know, I'm telling the truth. And I would listen and listen. And after that, she'd say, now, what we're really going to talk about is something else. <laughs> but she had a love for people. I'm sure there's not a pastor's wife in this building that ever came in contact with, you, with her that she did not encourage you in some kind of a way. In 1990, Bishop Patterson appointed my husband pastor of Holy Temple Church of God in Christ. And God has give, had given us favor. For many, many years, we had Sunday dinner with the Patterson. I find myself with mixed emotions on tonight. My friend is gone. I talked to her a few months ago and I told her, before we start talking, I said, I want to share something with you. And I told her I had been studying about Queen Esther. And some of the things that I learned about Queen Esther, I find them in you. I'm talking to her. I said, out of all the beauty and all of the other attributes, who would have ever thought in 1967 you would have the assignment that you have tonight or that you had when I was talking to her? I said, after the Lord took Bishop home, you stepped right up to the plate. Your assignment began. You selected those tapes that were prevalent. They're just as powerful today as they were when they were preached. And I told her, although the messenger sleep, because of you, the message lives on. And she said, Gwen, sometimes I just don't feel like doing it. I said, don't worry about that. She said, but Bishop taught us, let the weak say I'm strong. And she found strength to do what she needed to do. As Queen Esther had an assignment, she had an assignment. I said, and I want you to know you're carrying out your assignment well. 
And that time we hung up the phone with a few tears in our eyes because we talked to each other later. That was enough for that night. But I can remember so many things. I mentioned in 1990 when Bishop was sending my husband in Idaho Holy Temple, she called me. She said, Gwen Elder J is going to go over there and put every dime he got in that church. So he's going to do just like my husband did. And you know what she told me? And don't you say a word. That just sound just like her. She said, don't you say a word. She said, the Lord's going to reward you. I took her at heart. I couldn't say anything because I wasn't expecting that to be the conversation. But I'm sure she's poured into all of our lives some richness. It's not all about beauty and clothes and things. Someone told me the other day, so you know, you got to give it to she was sharp as she could be. I said, whether you give it to her or not, it is what it is. Didn't need your approval to give. I thank God that she was my friend. During the time when Bishop was ill, sometimes she'd call around midnight. And I could tell in her voice how our conversation was going to go. She said, Gwenny, I can't talk to everybody. She said, you and Elder Jay. Keep Bishop in your prayers. And we did just that. As I said, God gave us favor as a couple with them. We traveled with them. They were a class act. They never made us feel inferior. We probably didn't have $10 in our pocket. I don't know. But that's the kind of people they were. That's the kind of person she was. As I said, she represented well. I'm going to miss my friend. The last time I talked to her, I called a check on her, and I found myself just at awe. Very seldom did we hit the phone when she didn't say, Gwenny, I love you. She said, tell Elder Jay I love him. Very seldomly did we not say those words. And I would tell her, we love you back and we love you more. I thank God for the years, for the memories that we will always cherish in our life. I'm going to miss you, my friend. Rest in peace. And I'll see you in the rapture. We're too quiet. <laughs> she don't like quiet. I know they talking about the robe and her crown. But can you imagine when her feet struck Zion? Said she gonna walk on pure gold. And she loved gold. She loved beautiful things. And I can imagine her now. I finally made it. I made it. I made it. Hold on. Hold on, I got my stuff right here. I'm not like Gwen and them. I'm not up all the time, uh, Mia. But I know there's a great celebration going on right now. And it ought to be one going on down here. We sitting around too quiet. Women, raise your hand and make some noise. Let's make some noise. 
Make some noise. Glory to God. Glory. Ashanti Doma. Glory. Oh, God. She's not there. You know that, don't you? That's just a shell. But she's a beautiful shell. She's just as pretty there as she was up walking around. Let me get to this. Okay. She was a holy woman of great faith. She was a promise keeper. She possessed godly principles, wisdom, caring, a giver. She had an integrity. She was an icon, a trailblazer, a trendsetter. She was a role model. She loved with a pure heart, and she was a friend. After Bishop G.E. death, she became the president and CEO of Bountiful Blessings Incorporated. She didn't totally understand the business, but she was smart and surrounded herself with business-minded people who understand the structure of the organization. And she created the Bountiful Blessings Board Will you all stand? They're here. Will you all just stand so the people can see you? All right, stand. Michael. Lorraine. I see you. Uh, Attorney Kevin Cole. Robert White. Thank you all so much. So she, so for 15 years, she successfully continued the Bountiful Blessing telecast, and she ran WBBP AM radio station. She was in demand all across the country to speak to the women. So Bishop G.E. came to me and selected me to be her adjutant to travel with her. And I did for years, traveling across the country. At the entrance of a room, she would captivate the whole room with her beauty and her smile. She empowered the women with the word of God and giving them spiritual guides. Yes, a unique way to live in God's word. Sometimes comical, but it was profound and uplifting. She knew how to rightly divide the word of God. She left the women with little nuggets that they will never forget. Her greatest one is when God has you on hold. Don't you hang up. And if I got to love my enemies, I'm not going to hell hating yours. Divas don't downsize. Women are nurturers. Men be a skyscrapers. But we be a president. Go ahead on, Sister Lou. And her most famous slogan, GE, brings good things to light. Okay? This way it's about love, and she loved. Not by talking love, but she showed love. She showed action. All right. I remember when she and I went to St. Louis for a meeting. That was a parade. Of course, they made us the Grand Marshals. We walked in the parade in our mink coats. But by the time we took 20 steps, we had to go sit in the car. And I never forget, I went to Walgreens with her. I never seen this in my life. She spent $600 in Walgreens. <laughs> and she walked down every aisle like she was in Nemo Marcus. And, I, and she didn't even buy a prescription. I'm like, who goes in Walgreens and spends $600? <laughs> she was an impeccable dresser. We would go shopping. In Atlanta, down in Atlanta, 
We would stay at Monica's house, Dean's daughter. She would have a whole rack of clothes. I would have a whole rack of clothes. <laughs> Tiny came to me one day. She said, Jean, Louise go break you. <laughs> I said, Tiny, I'm not going to let her break me. A few days after that, she calls me. Jean, go and buy you some toilets. I said, toilets? She said, yeah, I said, come on. I said, come on. She said, yeah, we got to get them now. You got to get some high toilets. I said, okay, she bought some. I goes out, dumb bunny. <laughs> I bought four. I bought four commodes, and I found the kind of myself. She is about to put me in the poor house. <laughs> Not the poor house, but the poor house. Well, so many good memories. We laughed, we cried, we shared stories. But this is not a loss. This is a game. Now, I'm so glad we had these times together. Rest on my sister and enjoy heaven as you reunite with the love of your life. Bishop G.E. Patterson, love you all, family. You all are my family, just like she was saying. What an opportunity it is for me to stand here tonight to give a tribute for my friend, Louise Dowdy Patterson. Louise, thank you for being my friend for 58 years. Long time. I will suspend the titles on tonight because we were the down to earth girls. Tonight, my assignment, as Pastor Norma so eloquently said, my assignment in on tonight. Louise Dowdy Patterson was my God given assignment as a friend from the beginning from God. Didn't know it when I met her, but I soon learned. We assemble to celebrate the life and legacy of one that gave so much of herself for the comfort of others. That was the life of my friend. Trust and confidence are the two most required requirements of a strong relationship for any friendship to survive. You are able to count on one another in the good times and the Lord knows in the bad. Part of our caring for each other as a friend was honoring what they tell you in secret. No matter the significance, with the confidentiality and the respect. Life is a journey of sunshine and rain, heartache and pain. They all come that we might mature as people of the Lord for his God glory and for us to mature as his children. Louise's and my most sacred times were her salvation, my participation in their wedding, the salvation of my husband. I think she shouted as much as I did. The birth of my two daughters, her selection to become their godmother, 
and trying to reach the agreement. As somebody said, she had an argumentative spirit, was trying to agree what to name my last baby. She prevailed because it was time for delivery. We had part of the name, of which I knew, but the other part. So we were arguing backwards and forward. What, her name was Shanta. I knew I had that. So what about the middle name? So he did say she put her hand up. Well, what about Louise? <laughs> Gilbert said, no, we're not naming no baby Louise. My mama Louise, you Louise. We're not naming Louise. But guess what? Her name became Shanta Louise Lee. Shanta, stand up. She is here tonight. My older daughter, Alicia Michelle, is not with us. Our most interesting fun times as girlfriends. While well, first airplane ride, my what a trip. She told me all the things that don't do because I was frightened. I had not ridden before. Teaching her to drive was hilarious. We walked out in that new car Bishop had bought her. And he said, Des, <laughs> are you going to get in there and ride with Louise? And I said, yeah, I got to teach you how to drive. He said, go right ahead because I am not getting in the car with her. <laughs> the other thing was we did much shopping, as you have heard others. We loved to shop, 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 shop. Because that was our girlfriend thing. Tonight, her death has ended my assignment. After my grief has ended, I will remember her for the rest of my life. I am one of the few persons, if not the only one, that has been given this privilege. I met her as Louise Dowdy, 1964, I introduced her to Gilbert Patterson, 1965. I participated in their wedding in 1967. She then became Louise Dowdy Patterson. Tonight, I have the privilege to present her back to her husband in death after 50 five years. What an honor that I have been afforded. Life race, well run. Life's work, well done. Life's crown, well won. Now she rests. God bless you, my friend. I will love you forever. Jesus. God is great and he is mighty. We are celebrating. We are celebrating a life. Let us please stand and as we stand let us pray for the prayer warrior that is going to come now and talk about her sister. The one who knows her best. Who's known her every day of her life. That is our dear mother Frances Kelly. What a mighty God we serve.
wonder working God mighty king strong deliverer yeah yeah Lord, I thank you. This ain't the way I had planned it. Please take your seats. Lord, I give your name praise. I give your name glory. I thank you for the years. Ah. I'll be all right in a minute. Thank you, Jesus. My God, my God. Never thought I'd see this day. I thought she'd probably be saying something over me. But anyhow, I thank God for Queenie. That's the name I gave. I don't mean to dishonor the leadership of the church. All of you. I'm here. I think the, was we talk about the family. <laughs> what did paper say? What did huh? I'll represent the family. Y'all quit laughing at me. Thank you, G. Well, at least I can laugh about something. Hey! Thank you. Glory! Hallelujah! My, 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 my. Let's just great be name. Our family. Loved Queenie Louise in different ways, on different levels. We have a beautiful family. And we all had our times with her. I'm so grateful that my little sister saw something in me before we were saved that she wanted to duplicate or try to do. I left home and went into singing and carrying on and whatnot and she thought that was kind of nice so she wanted to go out and she did for a few minutes and got with a little kicking troop and whatnot dance troupe her friend I, uh, she traveled for a little while but she never forgot home nor her family God blessed us with a lovely family and to represent the family on behalf of Queenie is a great honor for me She was beautifully dressed, but it wasn't always like that because we were not wealthy anyhow. But I do want to tell you, she looked cute before she became Mrs. Patterson. <laughs> Didn't she, Des? Des was a friend. But see, she worked at one of the finest uh, stores here in the city. I had worked at Goldsmith and whatnot. And see, what you might not know is once the clothes stay in stock for so long, you can get them at a great big discount or they'll send them back. So she would get her things from, well, I'm just going to say it because it was Julius Lewis. So she began to look cute. So when Bishop G.E. saw her, she was already cute. (laughs) 
and I, I think I think he had some business at the company where Sister Desi worked because I heard that the three of them had gone to lunch or whatever. But by this time, I had gotten saved. And when I came back home, I would follow her around and those young people there, my nieces and nephews, they hadn't been born, of course. And uh, my younger brother, I believe he had gone to California somewhere when he was a teenager. He, but now, we have an interesting family and I'm not going to None of your business. I ain't going to tell you all our stuff. But I can't tell you this, including evangelist, missionary, Francis Kelly. The world don't owe me nothing. I had enough of the world. And when I came over here, I came to stay. When I put enough in the mind of Louise and I found out she was going down to a uh, holy temple uh, where Bishop G was and they were going to lunch and whatnot and I would follow her around and I said guess what Queenie so and so so she be trying to get ready to go to work and, and boy, mama make Francis leave me alone that's all she want to do is talk about but I want you to know after I heard they had been going to lunch so I found out who this bishop this yeah, there wasn't no bishop this little G.E. Patterson fellow was. And he was over there with his daddy. I went over there to the church, because by this time I'm saved. So I'm really juking at her about salvation, too. She never was a bad girl, so that ain't nothing to do with it. It's saved or lost. So we want, I wanted her to be saved since I had gotten saved. And I got to him, I said, I understand you trying to date my sister or something. I said, but look, I'm going to tell you, leave her alone. I want my sister saved. So Gilbert said, I mean, Bishop G, he said, Sister Kelly, I'm not doing anything that would keep your sister from being saved. He said, yes, I've gone to lunch with her. And uh, uh, did you introduce them to each other, Sister Desi? Huh? You did? I'll see you after a while. But he... <laughs> I was really after him. <clears throat> I was, was going to get him. Because I wanted my sister saved, and I didn't want her going around with this young preacher that was getting popular and everybody was, you know, trying to go to lunch. And he, when I got to him, I, I said, let me tell you, I want my, he said, Sis Kelly, I'm just not doing anything with her. And next thing I knew, <clears throat> he had asked Papa Dada for her hand. And he ended up with all of her. <laughs> <laughs> they did a beautiful work. My family appreciated them. <laughs> and most of my family, uh, in, uh, all of them I'm looking at now in the church somewhere. I'm so thankful for Queenie. I'm so thankful for Louise. I'm thankful that she was not only a good wife, but she had good sense. She followed her husband's leadership. She spread the ministry that he preached in her own feminine, beautiful, eloquent way. She was a lady. She was a lady. And we have examples in our family sitting there now, and I'm looking at family, married into the families and whatnot. When I'm looking at part of the Pattersons there, the other part of the Pattersons, 
you got to remember Gilbert was a Patterson. And I'm still looking at Bishop Mason's great, great granddaughter sitting there. And so Louise influenced not only our family, but she influenced families. And I'm so thankful for that. And I'm about to sit down, but y'all talk long, so she and my sister, I talk long as I want to. Okay? But I'm not going to. I'm going to sit down in a minute. Sit down in a minute. Because this is, this is the uplifted me a little bit. Thank you. Thank you for your patience with me. Thank you for allowing me this time. And thank you for putting up with what I'm saying. I, I, I wanted to write something. I couldn't get anything. I just couldn't. So I'm just doing, I'm just doing the best I can. That's all. Bless you, bless you, bless you. And I look behind me at these preachers, and each one of them had a place in her life. I look at Sister Hawkins, and these ladies. Louise had a place in their lives. She would talk, and she could give uh, directives and directions and I'm jumping from place to place, but I'm doing the best I can. But anyway, when she got with Bishop G.E., and they married, I want you to know something, too. They didn't marry and move in this church, okay? His father ultimately went on to be with the Lord, and he got Holy Temple over there. They lived in a, one side of a duplex, over off, off of, was it Wellington or somewhere over there? Shadowlawn. They didn't have the luxury that she might have had at one point in her life because God blessed her with it. And when God blesses you with something, the devil in hell can't do nothing about it, okay? I remember one time, I, but I did tell them, I said, knock the wall out and ask them folks on that side to move and y'all can have the, the whole house. That's what they did. They had the wall knocked and, and they took the, both sides of the duplex. But I remember Bishop G. E. never, well, he wasn't Bishop G. He was, you know, Gilbert. He never worried anybody about anything. He never asked for anything. He, he didn't plague for anything. He worked for what he got working for the Lord. And I remember one time I told them they didn't have a refrigerator. It had gone bad or whatever. And I remember they had a number two tub in the middle of the floor with ice on it. And that's where they put the chicken on the ice in the tube. Be careful how you look at your people. Be careful how you judge people. You don't know what they've been through. And we had a family that stuck together. And we loved Gilbert. We loved Elder Patterson. And we loved Bishop. And some came to Christ under his leadership. And my sister grew in the Lord. She learned. She humbled. And I ain't gonna go through some stuff. She went through a little something there one time. I, I'm so glad that the Lord saved me. You know what I'm talking about. You know, I know you know. But anyway, I, I wouldn't even give the devil that much credit. Because the devil is a lie, and my sister is the queen. I'm about to sit down. I can't sing that song like she did by just another day, so I ain't going to mess with it. It looks like to me I'm going to sing myself off, right on off of here. Ah. Uh, 
I don't know what I'm saying yet, but just give me a little time. Oh, yeah. No, I ain't going to sing that one. Yes, I will say, just another day that the Lord has kept me. I can't sing it like she did. I do like I know. Just another day. There you go, that the Lord has kept me. He has kept me from all with my mind, with my mind, with my mind, with my mind. Staying on Jesus Just another day That the Lord Bird Jackson He done kept me
to God. I feel better. I feel better. How shall I talk? Thank you. Thank you, Sister Patterson, for teaching me everything I know. That's the reason I got this hat on today. She taught me how to wear my hats, and I thank you. But not only was she teaching us materialistic things, she taught us how to love the Lord. She taught us how to love God and to love God's people. And we thank you, Evangelist Louise Patterson. I've been a member here about 36 years, and I thank God for everything that she imparted to in me. I was a little Baptist girl, came to the sanctified church, and I used to go to the white and gold, and they be rolling on the floor, and Sister Kay Jackson be singing, the Jackson family be singing in the choir. And I tell you, when I would hear Bishop G.E. Patterson, I said, I got to get saved. And it's a lot of us were saved under Bishop G.E. Patterson. And Evangelist Patterson was my first first lady in the church of God in Christ. And I love her and I'm going to miss her. And we're going to move on with the program. My assignment. Woo, glory to God. We will have Bountiful Blessings Board of Directors, Deacon Willie Brooks, the resolution, acknowledgments, and condolences, Evangelist Rhonda Nelson, who is the missionary president of Temple of Deliverance. And then after that, we will have the Minister of Music by Temple Deliverance Choir, Praise Team, and after that, we will have the obituary red salad. Amen. Amen. Well, let the church say amen. 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 Protocol has been established to the Dowdy and the Patterson family. Words cannot convey the love and respect that I had for Evangelist Louise Dowdy Patterson, and I refer to her as Sister Patterson. I, along with the Bountiful Blessings Board of Directors and staff, want you to know that you have our support and we may remain in prayer for the entire family. God has called home a faithful servant to her reward in heaven. Over the last 60 days, I have experienced four persons who transitioned and made a tremendous contribution to my spiritual and professional development. Sister Patterson was one of the four. She's a living example of the scripture found in Proverbs 31 and 25. Strength and honor are her clothing, and she shall rejoice in time to come. She is symbolic of a diamond coming from the earth. Polished, true cut, brilliant color, sparkling, just one of a kind. Her works, the kindness of her heart, the zeal for excellence, and the love for Jesus defined who she was. When she entered the room, her presence was felt. She was beautiful inside and out. She brought her own sunshine everywhere she went. Bishop Patterson provided me the opportunity to serve in various leadership roles in the church. During my tenure as chairman of the Brotherhood, Sister Patterson and I developed a close bond that enabled us to work as a team to enhance the ministry and to serve others. Bishop Patterson could not have accomplished all of his successes in his ministry without the support of Sister Patterson. Bishop's successes were her successes. On a personal note, Sister Patterson was there for me in my milestones when I was elected to the Memphis City School Board, elected to Memphis Charter Commission, 
the Shelby County Commission, and the Shelby County Register of Deeds. In fact, this last election, I called her and asked her to vote. And she said, Brother Willie, the only way I'm going to vote to this poll, I'm going voting for you. I don't know nobody, but I'm going to vote for you. It just touched me because she took time out of her schedule, out of her day, that she wanted to make sure that she cast the vote for me. I value our relationship. She included me in her inner circle. And as a county commissioner, I bestowed upon her the honor of being recognized as one of Shelby County African-American living legends for her dedication to the citizens of Shelby County. <clears throat> Someone once said, as I grow older, I pay less attention to what people say. I just watch what they do. Sister Patterson can be described as a woman of action. For like Ruth and Naomi, she was a woman of good character. Like Esther, she used courage, timing, and great tact to talk with you about issues or problems that many of you may have had. As a result, she attained favor in the sight of many that looked upon her for consultation. As president and CEO of Bountiful Blessing Ministry, Sister Patterson embraced Bishop Patterson's threefold ministry, healing, deliverance, and salvation. She worked tirelessly with the support of the Bountiful Blessings Board of Directors, staff, and volunteers to continue her, love, her husband's legacy for 15 years. Think about it. 15 years she was able to continue the legacy, the TV ministry. Not at one time was that telecast off the radio. What woman could have done that? The only person I know that stayed popular is Ever Presley. But what black man, what preacher could have done that? She continued Bishop Patterson letters across the nation that you can name it and claim it, that Jesus is a habit breaker, that if you can have it, he can heal it. And you can be healed, be delivered, and set free. Somebody knew about that. She was a true servant that devoted her entire life to the ministry, but always had time to share a kind word and a pleasant thought with anyone who reached out to her. Many times after Sunday services, she stood over there and many people came over for her to greet her, that she took time out of her schedule before she left service just to say a, a encouraging word. She dedicated her life to make a difference in the lives of ordinary people. Her commitment to community service was always at the front, forefront of her life. Throughout her life, she demonstrated many qualities, loyalty, understanding, faithfulness, compassion, and godliness. I, along with many of you, experienced all of these from Sister Patterson. And even though she's no longer here with us, I know that in your heart, she will forever be. I would miss the weekly phone calls that we had at night. When everybody was asleep, that's when we talked. And she was always referred to him as Brother Willie. But as you know, when you're close to a person you spend time with, you don't always agree. Am I right? So when those things that we didn't agree, that's when she called me Deacon Brooks. <laughs> All right? But that's the kind of relationship that Sister Patterson and, and I had. I would miss the holiday fellowships at her home and the lemon meringue pie that she just reserved for me when I came. The Bible says in Matthew 5 and 8, Blessed are the pure in heart, but they shall see God. But what does that mean in heart? The Bible teaches us that those who are pure in heart are blessed. We experience a greater joy in our lives when we see his way rather than ours. And that was Sister Patterson. 
She was an example for others to follow and a pattern for them to live. Through all of her sickness, she fought a good fight. She finished her course. She kept the faith. We gather here tonight to celebrate one who has claimed her reward, and the reward come by a promise, and it's the same promise made to you and me. Sister Patterson has finished her race and claimed her crown, and I just thank God for the life and the legacy of Evangelist Louise Dowdy Patterson. Can you help me celebrate that? Thank you very much. Giving respect to the rostrum, which has already been acknowledged, we are here to do the acknowledgments, resolutions, and condolences. From the Bishop Wives Circle, resolution, God in his infinite wisdom has summoned to eternal rest his servant, Mother Louise Dowdy Patterson, wife of the late Chief Apostle Bishop Gilbert Earl Patterson. We continue to pray for, the mother, for Mother Frances Kelly and family, the Patterson family, the Temple of Deliverance, Church of God in Christ, and the jurisdictional family. Whereas we, the members of the Bishop's Wives Circle of the Church of God in Christ, Incorporated, acknowledge and mourn the passing of our dear sister, Mother Louise Dowdy Patterson. We know that in Philippians 1.21, Paul writes, to live is Christ, and to die is gain. It is befitting to express our sympathy, sympathy to the family during the transition of Mother Louise Dowdy Patterson, and we commend you to him who knows all things. Therefore, be it resolved that we want to share in your rejoicing that the Lord has welcomed Mother Louise Dowdy Patterson into his presence saying, well done, thy good and faithful servant. This comes from Evangelist Yolanda Bryant, President, Evangelist Virginia Collins, Vice President. Tennessee Fourth Ecclesiastical Jurisdiction, Bishop Jerry L. Maynard Prelate, Resolution, whereas Ye know not what shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. Thus was the life passage of our beloved evangelist Louise Dowdy Patterson, a woman much loved, respected, lived a good life full of adventure, victory, blessings, friendship, and praise to the Lord. Whereas the members of the Tennessee Fourth Jur Jurisdiction of the Church of God in Christ do acknowledge the demise of Evangelist Louise Dowdy Patterson on Sunday, November 20th, 2022, and Evangelist Louise Dowdy Patterson was born January 27th in Memphis, Tennessee. Whereas Evangelist Louise Dowdy Patterson was married to Elder Gilbert Earl Patterson on May 27th. 1967, was co-founder with her husband, Bishop Gilbert Earl Patterson of the Bountiful Blessings Deliverance, Deliverance Church Incorporated in March 1975. She remained a loyal and faithful supportive wife to her husband until his demise, whereas Evangelist Louise Dowdy Patterson was active in the Memphis community and contributed thousands of dollars to support scholarships and various charities across the United States. And whereas Louise Pat Dowdy Patterson was known for her impeccable dress and keen eye for passion, for fashion, whereas 
Evangelist Louise Dowdy Patterson served as president and CEO of Bountiful Blessings upon the demise of her husband. Therefore, be it resolved that the Tennessee Fourth Ecclesiastical Jurisdiction does hereby fully commit itself to remembering the woman, Evangelist Louise Dowdy Patterson, as a great warrior, a woman of wisdom, and a tender, loving heart for the people of God. Be it finally resolved that a copy of this resolution be given to her church, the Temple of Deliverance Church of God in Christ, and placed in the archives of the Jurisdictional Administrative Office of Tennessee Fourth, where the Honorable Dr. Jerry L. Maynard serves as prelate. Humbly submitted this day of December in the year of our Lord, 2022, Bishop Jerry L. Maynard, jurisdictional prelate and supervised, superintendent, rather, Donald Chisholm, jurisdictional executive secretary. Temple of Deliverance, Cathedral of Bountiful Blessings Ministries, Bishop Milton R. Hawkins, senior pastor. December 1st, 2022. Mother Frances Kelly and the family of Evangelist Louise Dowdy Patterson. Dear family, it is with heartfelt sympathy that my wife, Lady Catherine and I, along with the entire Temple of Deliverance Church family, extend to you our sincere condolences in the loss of your beloved sister. May loving memories of her fill your thoughts during this time of sorrow. Evangelist Louise Patterson is a name that will never be forgotten. She was the epitome of elegance, class, and distinction. Her life has touched multitudes. Through her kindness and charitable acts, she provided clothes for the masses. Her reach extended to those who were destitute and underprivileged. Evangelist Patterson inspired several young ladies to achieve and aspire to do significant things in life and make a positive impact on the world. When she spoke, wisdom fell from her lips, giving instructions to guide you during life's problematic periods. My memories of her span over nearly six decades. The personal interactions Lady Hawkins and I were blessed to have with her were priceless. Dowdy family, know that I am praying for you greatly during this difficult season. Know that God is your stronghold, your guide and comfort. May the burden of your heart be lightened by the realization of knowing the truth of the scriptures. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Isaiah 41 and 10. This comes from your fellow servant in Christ, Bishop Milton R. Hawkins, Senior Pastor. And for the sake of time on some of the resolutions, I won't read everything. That's for the sake of the eulogy which everyone does need to hear. Uh, United States House of Representatives Proclamation by Congressman Steve Cohen, 9th District, Tennessee. Whereas on behalf of the citizens of the 9th Congressional District of Tennessee, I mourn the passing and celebrate the life of Evangelist Louise Dowdy Patterson, a virtuous woman known for her elegance, sophistication, class, grace, style, impeccable attire and contributions to ministry. And whereas Evangelist Patterson was a woman of God who was influential in the faith-based community and the Church of God in Christ, an international denomination once led by her late husband, Bishop Gilbert Earl Patterson, the former presiding bishop, a role model as well, 
She was known for working with the youth and young adults. Evangelist Patterson continued to spread the unadulterated gospel via radio, TV, social media, and never stopped thanking God, even after her husband's death in 2007. Bishop Patterson had been Kojic's Pentecostal leader and chief apostle and founder of Temple of Deliverance Church of God in Christ, Bountiful Blessings Ministries, Incorporated. She picked up the mantle, continued to glorify God, and expanded her husband's ministry and legacy. And whereas she beca would become president and CEO of Bountiful Blessings Ministries, Inc., serve as general manager of WBBP, where Bible believers praise God, gospel radio station, serve as president of Podium Records, and author of a book titled A Rare Pearl, An Intimate Portrait. And whereas Evangelist Patterson was actively involved in several ministries, Bishop's Wives Circle, taught Sunday school at Temple of Deliverance, redesigned the structure of the church's new members class, organized the church's volunteer department, the closed closet launched annual senior citizens dinner. She also founded Total Woman Women's Conference to shed light on the national crisis in the African American community. Whereas Evangelist Patterson graduated from Lemoyne Owen College in 1967 with a bachelor's degree in business administration and married Bishop Patterson that same year, she was the first woman to work in Shelby County Tax Assessor's Office and later served as Vice President of Metropolitan Bank and Trust Company. Now therefore be it resolved that I, Steve Cohen, member of Congress, along with the citizens of the nice Congressional District of Tennessee, join the Patterson family, the Dowdy family, the faith-based community, and the many friends and loved ones of evangelist Louise Dowdy Patterson in mourning her passing, celebrating her life, legacy, and contributions to ministry on this first day of December, 2022. Hers was a life well lived. Steve Cohen, member of Congress. This one I will read because it's home. Resolution of respect in loving memory of evangelist Louise Dowdy Patterson. It has been said that the best use of one's life is to spend it for something that will outlast it. It is evident from the outpouring of tributes received from people around the world that the life of our president and CEO was well spent. She emptied herself of the gifts God placed within her and touched countless thousands of people along the way. We, the staff of Bountiful Blessings Incorporated, want the family to know that our hearts are with you as we celebrate the life and legacy of evangelist Louise Dowdy Patterson. Whereas she supported her husband throughout his apostleship and during his appointment and tenure as presiding bishop of Church of God in Christ Incorporated. Whereas while working alongside her husband in ministry, Evangelist Patterson was also able to establish herself as a visionary an advocate for hurting men and women. Her compassion and love for children and families led her to provide ongoing support to Porter Leith and other charitable causes. Whereas for the past 15 years, Evangelist Patterson has served as President and Chief Executive Officer of Bountiful Blessings Incorporated and has continued to spread the gospel and sustain the legacy and charitable work of the nonprofit organization via radio, television, and other available social media platforms. Whereas Evangelist Patterson lived her life as a consummate first lady and fulfilled her service as a devoted wife, spiritual mother, CEO, woman of God, and faithful friend, with assurance we believe she can stand before the righteous judge and proclaim, I have fought a good fight. I have finished the course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. Be it resolved, the staff of Bountiful Blessings Incorporated stands united with family and friends to celebrate a life well lived. 
and in words of acknowledgement, the family of the late Louise Dowdy Patterson and the Temple of Deliverance Church family wish to express our sincere thanks for every act of kindness shown during our time of loss. We extend special thanks to Rhonda Dusa Parks, Doreen Graves, Rhonda Nelson, Michael Scruggs, Brian Masters, Jesse Woodson, Cortez Nunley, Bountiful Blessings Incorporated Board of Directors, Bountiful Blessings Incorporated staff, Baptist Memorial Hospital, and R.S. Lewis Funeral Home. Thank you. many people are living to live again hallelujah and by and by one day we shall see our Jesus face to face No! 
will have the obituary read silently. My pastor said 30 seconds. You have to read the rest when you get home. Amen. It is my honor to present one of the pastoral assistants at Temple Deliverance Church of God in Christ where our pastor, Bishop Milton R. Hawkins, is the senior pastor. This woman of God is a prayer warrior, Bible study scholar, motivator, mentor, young women, maximizing the spirituality in women of all cultures and backgrounds. She is the daughter of the late Bishop Wyoming and Mary E. Wells. Her father was part of the original general board of the Church of God in Christ. She is the supervisor of Tennessee Four Women's Department under the leadership of our jurisdictional bishop, Bishop Jerry L. Maynard, Sr. It is my honor to present to you Mother Deola Wells Johnson with expressions. Brothers and sisters, anyone who knew Sister Patterson, the bishop's wife, the evangelist, the friend, or her, her quickly learned that she was full of hope. She persevered in triumph and tragedy. She kept on keeping on. She always had expectancy in her spirit because she was anchored in hope no matter what. No matter what she faced, no, what, no matter what she had to go through, no matter what the obstacle, she always had an expectancy and was filled with hope. When you're anchored in hope, nothing can move you. The bishop's wife had God's favor. The bishop's wife difficulties and challenges, but these were waves and wind of changing tides. She was consistent. Her hope was in the Lord. Expanded the range and relevance of her husband's ministry by continuing the legacy he provided. She had tenacity, steadfastness in her ministry. In the past couple days, I took the opportunity to review some of her messages and words of exaltation. She preached and taught deliverance and hope through trying times with unwavering resolve. She has left a great legacy in her own right, which taught us to persevere no matter the circumstances because we have an anchor in God. Goodbye, dear friend. 
Bishop's wife, evangelist, we'll see you in the morning. to the program. The best is yet to come. And mine, we're going to have presentation of the jurisdiction of Bishop by Bishop Andrew Jackson, administrative assistant, which will be introducing our jurisdiction of Bishop, Bishop Jerry L. Maynard Sr., the prelate of Tennessee Fourth Jurisdictional. After that, we will have the Minister of Music by Sister Deborah Manning Thomas and the eulogy by Bishop Milton R. Hawkins, Senior Pastor of Temple of Deliverance. Can we say amen? Amen. Well, tonight my assignment is very easy. I am honored and privileged tonight to present to you our leader. You know, it has been said that if a man says that he is a leader and no one is following him, he's just a man that's taken a walk. Our leader tonight has many followers, uh, far and near. And of course, our leader is a good man. Our leader is a godly man. Our leader is a kind man. Our leader is a generous man. Not only that, our leader is an honorable man. He is the pastor of the New Highway Cathedral of Praise Church of God in Christ right here in Memphis, Tennessee. He's the vice chairman of the General Assembly of the Church of God in Christ. He is the Bishop of the Tennessee Fourth Ecclesiastical Jurisdiction. And of course, last but not least, uh, he is the husband of the Dr. Mary T. Maynard. As a token of honor and respect, I'm going to ask everyone except the family to stand and receive our leader on tonight, our leader on tonight, the Bishop Jerry L. Maynard. Remain standing until he comes. Please be seated. Thank you so very much. Thank you, Bishop. Jackson, and we honor God, obviously, and we're thankful for the members of the general board who are present on this night, uh, the Bishop Hankerson, the Bishop Hines. And, you know, rather than to just go over, we do have the Bishop Wright and the Bishop Jackson, but I believe that there are a lot of people of the clergy in the house and we want this family to know all of you clergy people who are here tonight, irrespective of your position, whether you be an apostle, prophet, bishop, elder, pastor, superintendent, would you stand wherever you may be seated at this point? Thank you so very much. I appreciate it. Uh, it's just good, the family, to know that you're here and they're thankful for your being so. I'd like to just say to Bishop Jackson, thank you for allowing me to continue to serve as the vice chairman. But I think that uh, Bishop Melvin Smith would be a little upset if he found out I'm yet serving at this point after he won the election. Uh, God bless uh, Bishop uh, Frank White, the uh, financial secretary for the Church of God in Christ, sitting so appropriately with Sister Kay Jackson. That is quite honorable. Amen. And God bless this family, a Mother Frances Kelly and, and my good friend of a long standing, Brother Ron, it's good to see you and all of the members of this family who are present. We appreciate you. I have an assignment. I think everybody is picking up on what Pastor Norman said. 
and I'm going to be very brief. I, a lot of things I could say about Evangelist Louise Patterson, met her through Bishop G.E. Patterson, who uh, in his book, Here Comes a Judge, said that I was his best friend. But people don't know the relationship that I had with Evangelist Louise Patterson. But one of the things I'd like to say is this. There is a word that has been used tonight that stands so tall and is so strong, and that word is love. She loved. Irrespective of, she loved. Situations, she loved. Differences of opinion, she loved. And rather than to go on in historical significance with regard to our relationship, allow me to read from uh, one of Shakespeare's sonnets, 116, which reads, let me not to the marriage of true minds admit impediments. Love is not love which alters with it alteration finds or bends with the remover to remove. Oh no, it is an ever fixed mark that looks on tempest and is never shaken. It is the star to every wandering bark. Earth unknown, although his height be taken. Love's not time's fool, though rosy lips and cheeks within his bending sickle's compass come. Love alters not with his brief hours and weeks, but bears it out even to the edge of doom. If this be error, and upon me proved, I never writ, nor no man ever loved him. William Shakespeare. I want to say this, Kay Jackson. You have shown so much love to this family. To, you cannot mention Bishop Gilbert Earl Patterson and Evangelist Louise Patterson and not have you included in that conversation. They loved you. We love you. On behalf of Dr. Harry T. Maynard and the Tennessee Fourth Body, I have a presentation to give to you. We thank God for you. May I have one of the adjutants to come and take that to her? We love you. God bless you. Now, I know that if I were sitting where Bishop Hawkins is sitting, I would be looking at people as they walked. And those of you who are yet seated, and I would think, just how long is Jerry Maynard going to stay up there? Well, Bishop, I promise you that I am going to present you, although uh, my good friend of uh, uh, social media, uh, the district missionary Yolanda Owens, uh, basically did so. But I think that it's appropriate for me to uh, present you not only to your own local congregation, but also to all of us who are gathered. It is, in my opinion, also appropriate for you, the pastor of Evangelist Louise Patterson, to eulogize her in the service on tonight. Bishop Hawkins has come into this house and he has done a job that one has to commend him for. 
He followed one of the greatest preachers that ever preached the word of God. He followed one of the greatest organizers of churches that we will know of. And he followed a person who everybody who talked about him, talked about him in such a way that you would think it very difficult to follow him. And the truth of the matter is, it is. However, I am appreciative of Bishop Hawkins because what he did was he tried not to be him, but rather to be himself and to allow the anointing of God to flow in his life and give to the people the word that God would give that you should have. I stand here as one who appointed him to this church, and I stand here tonight as one who feels very comfortable in bringing him forth to you on the evening because it's just the right thing to do. Those of you who are not members of the family, I'm sure at this time uh, when uh, Deborah Manning Thomas has finished singing, you're going to stand to your feet and you're going to hear what thus saith the Lord through the Bishop Hawkins as he brings the eulogy on God's servant, my nephew, your pastor, the Bishop Hawkins. Unfold, preparing his entrance, the stars shall
our Savior and our Lord. The angel shall sound the shout of his coming. Father, we thank you for your presence and for your spirit. It is your anointing that destroys every yoke. Be glorified in this place. Touch this family and all of your people everywhere. Let your anointing destroy every yoke. And all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise is thine. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Please be seated. We thank God for his goodness on tonight, and we thank God for a jurisdictional bishop, Bishop Jerry L. Maynard, and to the members of the general board, Bishop Hankerson and Bishop Darrell Hines, to the College of Bishops, and to all of 
the Lord's people, the bishop's wives, to my wife, evangelist Catherine Crawford Hawkins, who did a tremendous job facilitating on tonight. And God bless my district missionary, missionary Yolanda Owens, and to this great family, the Dowdy Patterson family, to which I am a part of. Mother Kelly, you know we love you. Brother Ronnie, we love you and all of the family. God bless financial secretary, my brother, Bishop Anthon White. As a matter of fact, uh, two of both Bishop Patterson and Sister Patterson's sons are here. Uh, both Bishop Darrell Hines and Bishop Frank Anthon White were their sons. And we are brothers. And we praise God for them. The other son was sitting over there. You didn't see him. Bishop Marvin Winans was sitting there, but he had to tip out. And we thank God for them. If you have your Bibles, please open them to the book of Job, chapter 14. Job 14. Now, I've got to cut some corners uh, because now the uh, 10 o'clock news is on. And I want to certainly get you home before nightline. Oh, you finally got it all right. I won't go into the depth of love and appreciation uh, that I had for uh, Aunt Louise, Mother Patterson, Evangelist Patterson. But our history goes all the way back to the early to mid-1960s when I stayed in her home from a child. And I told my wife when I um, proposed to her and married her, I said, now one thing I don't do, I'm not into shopping. And she said, why? And I told her, because when I was a little boy, I had to carry all Aunt Louise bags. <laughs> so I said, I'm not in the shopping. Job chapter 14, verse 14. If a man die, shall he live again? All the days of my appointed time will I wait till my change comes. And then 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 1. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God and house, not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For just a few moments, I want to share this thought with you, a better offer. A better offer. It is Job who is not only a historic figure, but he is a real figure, but he is an example of suffering. It is Job that pin uh, the phrase, man that is born of a woman is a few days and full of trouble. He cometh forth like a flower. He's cut down and fleeth as a shadow and continueth not. Job was one that lived such a godly life that he attracted the attention of the devil. It was Satan when the sons of God came to present themselves also before the Lord. Satan showed up at the same time. While he showed up, God asked him a question. Where have you been? What have you been doing? And let me paraphrase, Satan said, I'm looking for saints. I'm looking for those who are vulnerable because I want to try to weaken God's kingdom and strengthen mine. And God said, have you considered my servant Job? Now, when God calls you a servant, he doesn't use words loosely. He called him a servant because you cannot be a true servant unless you serve. And so he was a servant. 
a perfect man, upright man, full of integrity, one that escheweth evil. God said, have you checked him out? Job responded, or Satan responded rather, and said, well, God, the only reason that he's serving you is because you keep giving him good stuff. You keep blessing him. But if you allow me to do what I want to do, he won't serve you like he used to. God let him know, you're mistaken. I know Job better than you do. Uh, because Job has been so faithful to me that Job actually loves me, and if he didn't have anything, he'd serve me. And there are some people that knows what it's like to serve God with nothing. Uh, those of us that know uh, Mother Patterson, Aunt Louise, she told us several times she came from the projects, but she did not have a project mentality. She came from the low place, but she had a higher destination. Job would serve me for nothing. And I know there's at least 100 people in here that can say, I've served God with nothing. But down through the years, God has been good to me. And all of my life, God has been good to me. And he brought me out of nothing into that marvelous light. Job asked the question, if a man dies, shall he live again? It seems like it's a preposterous question. It seems like it's ridiculous. It seems like it is uh, senseless for him to ask a question, if a man die, shall he live again? But God said, yes. He said, I want you to know that you will live again because there is a place where the wicked cease from troubling and there is a place where the weary be at rest and there is a place that Jesus said in my father's house there are many mansions and if it were not so I would have told you I go to prepare a place for you that where I am there ye may be also I'm almost finished y'all but then not only did Job said I had some trouble Paul said, let me get in on that testimony. Paul said, I've been shipwrecked. Paul said, I've been torn asunder. Paul said, they stoned me almost to death. They came after me. They had to let me down in a basket by the walls of Damascus. But out of them all, the Lord delivered me. And I want you to know that the same God that delivered Paul, he delivered Sister Patterson. Because all of us were sinking deep in sin, seeking the fall from the peaceful shore, seeking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry, and from the waters he lifted me. Now safe am I. Paul had to say, look, this, this world is something else. But one thing we need to know that if we know that if this tabernacle were dissolved, that we have a building of God, not made with hands. See, everything on the left side of the, corner, of the comma is a man-made things. We are troubled on every side. But the right side of the corner said, do not distress. That's the God side. We are persecuted on this side, but not forsaken by God on the other side. And here we are in this celebration tonight, knowing that death didn't snatch her away, knowing that sickness didn't snatch her away. But when it's your time, it's your time. And man that's born of a woman is only of a few days. He's got some trouble in his life. But though they slay me, yet will I trust in him. And I just believe that the Lord has not brought us this far to leave us now. This house of this earthly tent, this tabernacle, once it's going to be dissolved. But we have another building. In other words, we've got a better offer over in glory. And it's mine, all mine. We've got a building where there are no leaks. We've got another building where there's no intrusion. There's no break-in. There's no leaks. It's another building 
and you know as well as I know, Sister Patterson, Evangelist Louise, she wore some bad rags. She was dressed up all the time. She had nice jewelry. She had nice clothes. She had nice shoes. She just had it like that. But one glad day, some glad morning, she looked up to heal. And she looked over the back of me of heaven And she said, I want to go higher And she saw another garment She saw a white robe Where the God gives the white robe To those that have been washed in the blood of the Lamb She threw away her hat And said, I want a crown She threw away her shoes And said, let me walk on the streets of gold she said I want to go over there and when I see Jesus amen when I see the one that died for me when I see the one that was wounded for my transgression he was bruised for my iniquities the chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes we are healed God made her a better offer she said, I got to go, y'all. I'm leaving Shadowlaw. I'm leaving McCorkle. I'm leaving Pontview. We've got to go, y'all. And she said, I've got a mansion over in glory. And it's mine. It's all mine. Yes. I'm going to a place where there be no more weeping. I'm going to a place where there be no more dying. I'm going to a place where there be no more sickness. I'm going to a place where I don't have to worry about going to the hospital. And when I get there, I know that I'm going to see uh, my mother there. I know I'm going to see uh, my husband there. I know I'm going to see some of the saints of old there. But when I see Jesus, when I see Jesus, I'm going to shout amen. When I see Jesus, I'm going to give God the glory. When I see Jesus, I'm going to clap my hand. Because can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like the Lord. Come on, funeral director. Oh, bless the name of the Lord Jesus. On tomorrow, beloved hearts, we will have the final celebration for Evangelist Louise Doughty Patterson, His Grace, the Most Reverend John Drew Sheard, Presiding Bishop and Chief Apostle of the Church of God in Christ, will be the final voice that we hear concerning our dearly beloved. Please pray for the family. Our service tomorrow morning is early at 10 a.m. And let's come and remember the life of this dear woman of God. Please allow the family to depart first. Before you exit, please hold your places until the family has exited the building. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.